It's a day years in the making, one Georgina McGraw feared might never happen. A key moment in moving toward legislation to tackle an epidemic that's killing women. I had senators coming to me, thanking me for what I was doing for all Canadians. And all that went through my mind was, 10 years ago you were being beaten, and today here you are going to sit down to testify. Not for myself, because it's not going to change my story. But it, there is a big chance that it will change somebody else's story. Thank you. So whatever we can do about oh. Georgina McGraw's story is not uncommon, and that's the problem. I am Georgina McGraw, and I am a survivor of intimate partner violence. My last beating was September the 25th, 2014. More than a decade ago, McGraw was a businesswoman in Labrador, strong, determined, at the helm of multiple companies, watching growth in her day job, while behind closed doors, everything was falling apart. It started with a violator from Happy Valley Goose Bay. It became constant emotional, mental, and physical abuse. This nightmare ended with a rifle. He looked at me and he said, this bullet is for you and this one is for me. She survived that relationship and in 2012, a new man swept her off her feet. Although I couldn't see any red flags at the time, they were there. I allowed myself to become blind once again. On September the 25th, 2014, I received the biggest beating of my life. He pushed me to the floor, got on top of me and started strangling me. He would let go and continue with punch after punch. And I knew he was going to end my life. But then I decided I would end it myself. Before she did that, McGraw placed a call to her sister who called the police. It saved her life. I felt so alone. A year later, McGraw started to speak publicly. She went to the Confederation Building, joined a justice committee, spoke to the media, but she knew it wasn't enough. I've done stuff on the provincial level. Let's go to the federal level, because it just can't be about one province. It has to be Canada as a whole, because we have to talk about every woman or every person that's being abused, you know, when it comes to intimate partner violence. And um, I called Senator Fabian Manning. I think we need to look at the whole ecosystem altogether. I mean, the relationship between Cod uh, and Caitlin, I mean, it's not just taking one species and trying to determine what has happened. A longtime politician, provincially and federally, whose career has mainly focused on the fishery. I wear that with a badge of honor. Now add champion for those who have been abused by their partners. I have met personally with 120 odd uh, women here in Newfoundland and Labrador. I have, uh, you know, met with different organizations in Ottawa from across the country. McGraw and Manning grew up in the same area. She trusted him. And in 2018, he brought forward a private member's bill. They aren't often successful. He hopes this one will be. Basically what we're asking the government is to uh, develop a national strategy which will give all the organizations, groups around the country an opportunity to participate, to put forward their concerns, and uh, to have, I guess, a, a piece of legislation uh, in place in the country that would address what is absolutely is an epidemic in our country at the present time. Canada already has a gender-based violence plan, but it's not law. No doubt the action plan is needed, and I'm hoping that it just, you know, is a parallel with the piece of legislation. But legislation is law. Right now, the bill is pretty bare bones. It calls for the federal government to develop a strategy within two years. The Senate Social Affairs Committee has been hearing from advocacy groups, police and health care professionals over the last month. We need to act urgently. It is a massive epidemic. Something that hits home with me and is very difficult for me is uh, strangulation. 
Strangulation, uh, when we go into our hospitals across our country, if we have a gunshot or a knife wound, um, it's automatic that the emergency room has to, uh, the doctor has to contact the police. Um, strangulation, it doesn't. If they're holding a gun there, which has, and I can speak about that because it has happened to me, um, if they're hold, holding a rifle to you, then there's a distance. Strangulation, they're in your face. Their eyes are in your eyes, except their eyes are empty. Their two hands are around your neck, and they hold your life in their hands. For every person abused, the bill means something different. I have uh, become friends with a family who their daughter was 16 and became involved with a um, man who was older than her. And they went back and forth to the police dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And there was nothing that the police could do because she was 16. And 16 is considered a gray area. Her daughter was shot. Debbie Hibbs has talked publicly countless times about the murder of her daughter. The perpetrator who came into her life took over her life. It's like nothing changes and you speak out to raise awareness, uh, but like nobody's listening. Julianne Hibbs and her boyfriend Vince Dillon were gunned down more than a decade ago. Her ex-boyfriend later turned the gun on himself. Intensifying it all is that Phil and Debbie Hibbs had only just gotten their daughter back. Our daughter was living with the person who ultimately murdered her. And, you know, we tried and tried every avenue we could to uh, get some intervention. And it was like uh, we met like with a brick wall every time we turned. Julianne was 16 when she moved out with her partner and her parents' hands were tied. For the next nearly two decades, they saw their daughter by chance, a glimpse in the grocery store, passing by each other in the community. We knew that it wasn't her. We knew it was his control and manipulation, which we tried to portray to law enforcement and that at the time, and even at one point in the court system, for them, the proposed bill holds so much promise, but they've had hope before. I hope it, the bill is going to go forward and make a difference. But more than that, here's a chance now for government to take this and run with it. Let's see if they will. There's a double-edged sword when it comes to advocating for something you're so intimately familiar with. McGraw says she's been told she saved lives, but each time it takes something from her too. For her, it's all worth it. It's so peaceful. Um, most times I'd rather be around animals than people. I live in Branch and it's, it's very quiet and we have a little hobby farm. And that's where I spend most of my time and I'm blessed today. Arianna Kelland, CBC News. St. John's.